Today we're going to be looking at the creation of a puffin in acrylics and working on a Winsor & Newton canvas board 12 inches by 10 inches. I've coated it completely with um, a nice even coat of acrylic paint uh, blending down from a darker blue to a lighter blue at the bottom and I'm just spattering on some white acrylic paint to create a little bit of a sea mist at the back of the bird. I've sketched the bird outline in using a white pastel pencil and now I'm beginning to add um, just some base coats. The paints I'm going to be using today are predominantly Liquitex Basics. They're a transparent, quite a transparent pigmented acrylic paint, ideal for how I work because I work in a multiple um, amount of glazes. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just applying a little bit of a base coat onto the beak now, going on with a yellow. Now obviously yellow, a transparent yellow over blue is going to give it a, a slightly greenish haze, but that's fine. Anything that looks um, natural, there's a lot of colours in the bill of a puffin, so I don't mind that at all. Now once I'd got that first layer on, I dried it with a hairdryer. Now I'm going over with a second coat, uh, a cream coat, still a little bit transparent, translucent, so I can see the bands of colour that I've put on underneath, so I won't need to sketch anything in again. And this is how I like to work with acrylics, building up nice gentle layers, um, blocking in areas, putting in detail, glazing over that with another colour and backwards and forwards, dark to light and light to dark. Now if I sound a bit croaky this is because this is the third attempt at recording a voiceover for this video today and I've not long got over Covid so please forgive me if I, if I sound a bit uh, gruff. Okay so I've mixed up um, a pale lilac colour uh, it's got a little bit of blue in it as well and just blocking in and I keep blocking in. If I, if I repeat myself during this recording it's because I've already recorded it twice before and I don't know if I'm repeating myself again or not as the case may be. Okay so yeah Liquitex Basics, they're one of my favourite acrylics. They're inexpensive so they are suitable for beginners. Um, but they are of artist quality. They are. They do have a really, really good light fast rating, and I believe they're actually made by Windsor and Newton, just under the name of Liquitex. So they're wonderful. But I do mix them in. I I, I do have um, some Liquitex soft body acrylics, and I also have golden acrylics, golden open acrylics um, that dry a little bit slower. But all different ones, and they're all interchangeable, intermixable. So the best dark materials you have are the ones you've already got. So so use use those. And I hope somebody there out there in the big wide world is painting along while listening to me waffle on. Okay, so base coats are on the beak. And now I'm beginning to add some colour. Keep referring back to my reference image. And in this video, as suggested by uh, one of my subscribers, I'm actually going to start having the finished painting up in the top left hand corner now. So you can see what I'm aiming for. Because sometimes um, if you're not actually the one doing the painting, uh, it can be a bit um, off-putting if you don't know what I'm actually aiming for and I can't describe it properly. So, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, just building up coats now. Lots and lots of layers. So I always start off, most mediums work in the same and I just want to get these markings in. They were in originally and I could still see the lines from the original layers underneath shining through and just building up these layers here. And how I work acrylics, it's all about glazes. So if I'm not putting the, the right colour in at the moment, it doesn't matter because I just glaze colours in over the top of this. So the brushes I'm using today are by Dale Rowney. I've had them donkey's years and they just suit me fine. I've got numerous brushes, some by well-known brands some just generic and as long as they do the job they're intended for and what I've purchased them for they're fine I don't look for anything really particular in a brush an acrylic brush it just needs to have a bit of a spring to it and that's all really 
when working with acrylics um, do try not to let the paint go further up the brush than halfway because if you get acrylic paint up into the furrow of the brush that's the part of the brush that holds the bristles and it dries up there it makes the bristles splay out and then it, you just end up with a splayed out bristle brush that's you know not very good for detailing things like that because it won't hold its point anymore so keep that in mind <coughs> keep the paint uh, down the bottom end of the bristles and don't let the paint dry in the bristles either I mean you can get um, brush cleaners and things like I use the master's brush cleaner if I, if any of my brushes do get into trouble but nine times out of ten I just wash them at the end of the day in water or in soapy water and does the job yeah so just look after your brushes they last you a lifetime and don't leave them soaking in water either because that will ruin them as well okay so I'm just building up lots and lots of layers as I said um, translucent layers at the minute just glazing away just trying to get some nice shape and form into this beak they've got a beautiful beak puffins have if you ever seen puffins in the wild um oh they're phenomenal creatures and it's really weird because you can't see their nostrils even on a really really close-up photograph you can't see the nostrils it's uh fascinating really bird anatomy now i'm just going on i've just mixed up um, a bit of an opaque mixture here and just pop in some detail on because you have to remember that a bird's beak is made out of keratin the same as our nails so they are they are a textured part of the bird you know they're not really really shiny and sleek unless you know unless they're wet then they're going to be shiny but they have ridges and texture there and when I paint with acrylics I do like to have texture in my paintings but I like it to be a physical texture and um sorry a texture that can be seen but not felt I do like all my layers to be flat um, to the surface of the paper or the canvas whatever I'm working on so just building up the look of the texture just with um, highlights and shadows and different colors you can work on different media mediums with um, different grounds sorry with acrylic paint you can work on paper as long as it's either gessoed or you can work on mixed media papers you can also get canvas pads and that's like just sheets of canvas but in a pad like you'd buy a pad of paper so if you're interested in getting started in acrylics then i thoroughly recommend the liquitex basics and yeah you could just grab yourself a pad of of canvas sheets and just try that there's so much to learn and it's it's never ending for every but for you know for anybody and everybody the the journey is just never ending and nothing that's what makes art fun that's what makes it fun for me is that um <clears throat> you know you you reach one goal and there's always more goals ahead of you that you can strive to achieve it's wonderful okay just adding some darker shapes and shadows to the beak some more glazing going on and really glazing it it allows the the light to go through and bounce off the pigments of the different layers underneath and that's what gives it um, the richness the more layers of glazing you can build up the the, the richer the painting looks when it's finished now obviously with acrylics these acrylics dry matte the um, liquitex basics dry matte so when your painting is finished it can look a little bit flat but as soon as it's varnished all of those colors come back to life and they look as though they've just been applied they're fresh they're deep um, so i think with most um, acrylic paintings that do dry matte you need that added varnish even if it's a matte varnish it will still give it that luster and depth and then you know acrylic paintings can look just like oil paintings you know and vice versa it's depending how you work the medium how you build up your layers but the idea with uh, glazing is to for those layers to be transparent translucent layers so that the light can enter and bounce around on the pigments of the layers underneath giving it added depth okay so obviously you wouldn't want to just apply try and apply detail to this bird's face in the white area 
straight onto blue so we're blocking in with the white to begin with and now where the feathers look black we're going to be um, blocking in with this color that I've mixed and it's a very deep blue with a little bit of lilac well, a little bit of purple popped in just to give it a bit of depth so if I'm painting a subject and it does have traditional black and white in it I never paint just with black and white I keep my pure white and jet black right till the end and, and maybe add a, a tiny bit to give it a bit of a punch at the end because less is more but as I'm building up the darker layers and the lighter layers I blend them in with other colors to give them depth so if it's a dark area that I want to look warm then I'll mix in maybe dark reds reddish browns burgundies things like that if it's a dark area that I want to look cool then I'll mix in blues and lilacs things like that and the same goes for highlights when you're highlighting areas if you want a highlighted area to look warm then you make the highlights of a warm hue if you want the highlights to look cool you make the highlights with a cool hue obviously with this one and as I always say with all of my uh, artworks I do bring in background colors into the subject itself so you'll see this later on that the blues used in the back are also used in the um, feather the glazing on the feathers on the wing so it's just to tie the whole painting together and give it um, an overall feel of either cool or warm or you know whatever I'm looking for on the day and moving on now the palette I use to mix my colors on is an actual it's a like a tempered glass palette it's called a new wave glass palette and it measures 12 inches by 16 inches and I slot that into a Masterson artist palette now the Masterson artist palette is like a large airtight plastic box but meant for um, art materials and not food it's like a big Tupperware a tray with a lid and the new wave glass palette fits so snugly in there now I don't know if the two companies actually got together and designed this together or if it just happened to work out this way but it's absolutely wonderful I can keep my uh, acrylics wet for weeks um, just using this airtight system and it's amazing because you know less wastage we're all you know fans of that aren't we your paint's not going to waste because any any of you that already work with acrylics you know that acrylics dry out really quick when you're working with them they dry very fast on the canvas or very fast on whatever surface you're painting on but they also dry out very quickly in your palette too and um, as a beginner you might find this um, a little bit frustrating because um, paints aren't cheap you know we, nobody can afford to throw paint away and seeing paint dry on your palette before you've had time to use it can be very disheartening but with this system with the new wave glass palette and the Masterson artist palette combined I can squirt my uh, colors out into there out of my tubes onto my palette then get a piece of dampened kitchen towel put it in one of the corners of the palette put the lid back on and those paints will be wet for weeks and and as I'm using them when I've got the palette open I do mist them down with water every few sort of every 10 minutes or so just to keep them wet okay back to the painting so now I've mixed up um, a lilac grey Lil yeah lilac grey yeah and I'm just applying shapes I'm looking at the reference images that I've got on my um, iPad and I'm just seeing where the hot where the sun in is catching the um, feathers where it's highlighting the feathers and those shapes I'm transferring and mirroring onto my painting now at the moment I'm using using like this violet grey that I've mixed up but I could be using cream or white because once once these shapes are in I'm going to be glazing over them so it really doesn't matter what color I'm using at the moment now having said that if you you're painting and you do accidentally put a color somewhere you didn't mean to fair enough you can cover it over with acrylics but try putting it in a couple of other places first and then covering so maybe you put it in three places then cover it 
because the thing is if you make a mistake and it's only in one area and you've covered it up if you can still see it it will look like an error but if it's in more than one area of your painting then it looks deliberate so just keep that in mind okay this is not for the faint hearted because i know this looks awful at the moment going onto the face with this color but i need to get some depth um, I need to get some shape onto the head because I can't just leave that big patch of white on his face like that. So building up layers again, building up these glazes, going gradually darker and changing the colours with each glaze that I put on adds depth and shape and form to the bird's head. So we will be zooming in in a minute. You'll uh, get a bit of a closer look. So round the back of the eye as well keeping a close eye on my uh, reference image at the same time and just blotting a little bit out there building up lots and lots of layers blotting it out a little bit more and zooming in so obviously you wouldn't want to well if you were painting sort of abstract or sort of for children's book illustrations and things like that it just look embarrassed I guess <laughs> so but now we're going on with uh, a more orange glaze building up all different colors so the more colors the merrier and all paintings go through ugly stages and as long as you trust your techniques you will reach the end goal it, for some people you might get there quicker but it you know, doesn't mean it's not going to work. Just keep building your layers. If you're not happy with how something looks, don't give up. It just means it, it isn't finished. It just needs a few more layers. So trust your tools, trust your techniques, work with good quality um, products as well so you can predict the outcome of what you're working with. Because if you're working with um, an inferior product, then nobody can predict the outcome of it. But if you're working with tried and tested products, especially if you've watched some reviews of what the product can actually do, then you know you're going to be able to get there in the end. So going in with a white, and as I said, less is more when you, if you are going to use white and black, a little bit of highlight in there. And when I dab it with my fingers, I'm blending it down and just lifting a little bit off if I've gone too heavy with it. So putting sort of a cheekbone in there, lifting that part of his face up a little bit. A little bit more detailing around there. And areas like this, you can use dry brushing a little bit. That's um, when your brush is quite dry, hasn't got much um, paint or water on it. And you, you, um, you use the texture of the canvas or the texture of the paper that you're working on to give your painting a little bit more texture too. But I, don't, I wouldn't recommend you overdo doing dry brushing because too much of it can look quite amateurish. Um, but then again, if um, that's a style that you want, but there's a lot of dry brushing, then go for it. I'm just explaining how I do things and how I like my paintings to look. Your technique, your style, it might be different to mine. So if it makes you happy, go for it. Because in the end, that's as artists, that's what we're all doing. We're just creating art because we love to do it. Uh, don't let anybody stop you or anybody else tell you otherwise. Okay, going on with some more of this lilac, this greyish lilac getting more highlights on the feather details and as I said I'll just glaze over them later once they're dry and uh, tint them to the colour that I want them to be if I'm not quite getting it this way. Now what you're not seeing is between each of these layers I'm actually drying the canvas with a hairdryer. Just a minute or so between each layer make sure that the, the layers underneath are nice and set. If I'm going on like this then the um, the paints have just been watered down with deionized water if I want to take the paint that little step further and use it like a watercolor I, I tend to just thin it down with um, a thinning medium then an acrylic thinning medium like a glazing medium and it just uh, helps the paint bind to the canvas and or the paint layers underneath it if, if it's been thinned down a lot 
all of my paintings are varnished in the end so whether the, it, the paint's been thinned down with water or a glazing medium doesn't matter because once they're varnished they stay in place they're not going anywhere okay looking back at my reference image now and having a look for the warmer tones that are underneath the tail and I mixed up this color can't tell you which colours are mixed together to uh, get it because it's quite a while ago when I filmed this and I don't keep notes. I have that many paints out um, going backwards and forwards so I, I don't really keep notes of that. But what I will do, I'll make a little video of how I set up my palette and mix on my palette. So if you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do if you're enjoying this video. Thank you to all of my subscribers so far. Love you all. You're amazing. Thank you for everyone who takes time to like my videos and leave comments and any questions. I do read them all and I do answer everybody's questions as well. So if you've got any mediums or subjects that you'd like to see me cover, then just pop a comment in the box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, shadowing under the leg now. now as you can see with the, the wing and the tail feathers here, all the colours that I ended up glazing into there, there's purples, there's sort of beiges, greens and blues and pinks, so all different ones. And you, you could go on forever, you could keep glazing, adding more highlights or shadows, glazing in again, um, never ending. And it's uh, so therapeutic, cup of coffee, podcast on and paint, it's, it's wonderful. Okay, so building up the layers still underneath the tail, <clears throat> building up some shadows, and then building up some highlights. And as I said, that between these layers, what you're not seeing is I am I am drying them between layers because if you go onto a layer and it's not dry, you've got a good tendency of lifting it back off, and then you'll end up with little white gaps in your painting where it's lifted the pigment off the canvas so either let the layers dry and go make a coffee or a cup of tea or something or just dry them with a hair dried just for a minute or so and then let your canvas cool because you, acrylics dry quickly already if you paint onto a warm canvas they'll dry even quicker so just you know make sure you give your canvas chance to cool between um, layers as well if you've dried it with a hair dryer okay base coats going on to the legs because obviously we're going to be painting some oranges and things on there and we don't want to be painting over the blue because naturally yellows oranges reds colors like that are naturally uh, translucent anyway so the blue would have been showing through so always best just to pop a quick base coat on it takes minutes to dry and then you can go back on there with your more transparent colors If you get, uh, like under the tail, if you get your base coats going on, your darker base coats, and then you start building up your lighter colours, try not to cover all of the base coats that you've already put on. I mean, if you do, it's no worry, because you can go back on again and put some more darks back in and repeat the process. But when you're building up layers, always try to leave a little bit of the first layers showing through, and it gives your painting that little bit of depth. You know, it allows the sunlight, um, well, the light, rays of light to penetrate the layers and bounce around and off the pigments and it will give it that depth. Plus any detailing you've put in the first layers will show through and uh, give it a little bit more depth as well. So just add in some more shading, tinting the colours that are already there. Oh, I'm so hoping this voiceover is going to record okay. Third time lucky, eh? <laughs> Going on a little bit more. And the feathers don't have to be, you know, perfect one for one. I'm looking at my reference image, but it's the feel of the feathers that I want more than ever. I mean, this painting, it's only 12 inches by 10 inches, so it's not huge. I mean, you could do something bigger than life size and really go for the details then. But this is a lovely size and it's a nice size for beginners too, um, 12 inch by 10 inch. I wouldn't go too big um, if you're a beginner with acrylic simply because of the drying time. You know, you could get halfway through 
putting a wash on or something and it will be drying before you've had time to blend things out and that can be a little bit frustrating when you're first starting out so try not to go for something too big um, unless you've got an airbrush because airbrush backgrounds are, are nice and easy I can do some videos on airbrushing too if you'd like to see some there's no airbrushing involved in this one this is all brush work okay so on with an orange now the leg that's nearest to us I've got to remember that that's going to be slightly lighter because it's not being shadowed by the puffing so much as the other leg so keeping that in mind and the jaggedy edges of the legs I do tidy up <coughs> excuse me later towards the painting with a little bit of white and blue um, the background colors and I, I just tidy everything up that's not I've not filmed that I just did that um, sitting down one evening on the sofa and just had the canvas on my knee and I just tied it around the edges that's the lovely thing about acrylics you can always go back to it and work it a little bit more if you want to because it dries so quickly you know you could do some layers go and have dinner come back everything's dry and it's it's lovely and then you can just you know piddle about and do a little bit more and it's oh, it's lovely really nice and obviously if something goes wrong it's no worries because you can just um paint over it and start again i mean if a painting goes completely completely wrong you can literally just paint the whole of the canvas white and start all over again so you know don't ever fear that uh, you've ruined anything the only way you could ruin a canvas painting i guess is if you spilt um terps on it or rip the canvas somehow or something like that or dented it but then you can get dents out of canvases too by wetting the back of the canvas and drying it with a hairdryer so you can actually pull dents back out of um, canvases you can patch holes as well but I think canvases are so cheap nowadays unless you've had a, a special one made you know of a certain size um, they are they're cheap enough um, just to you might as well just buy a new one then repair an old ripped one anyway back onto the painting back on with some shadows i thought we were going back on with some shadows there we go i should know after doing this three times today what's coming next i hope everybody's keeping well i hope you're keeping creative and painting drawing or crafting whatever you like to do some more shadows going in and the, the color I'm using now is just a darkened color of the color that I used on the legs so it's keeping that um, just keeping quite a limited palette I guess just so everything gels together so it looks like one painting and not something stuck onto something else that's why i like to bring background colors into the subjects because then it makes it look like the subject is part of that um area you know the bird is actually sitting in front of that area it's not just cut out and pasted on so try and use um, your colors throughout a painting if you're painting fur then maybe some of the highlights could pull in some of the colors of the animal's surroundings if you're doing eyes and the animal is outside then maybe a little bit of blue in the reflection or the in the highlight of the eyes so it looks like it's outside okay now i've put um, where the grasses are going to go on the foreground i've just put a base coat of cream um, a cream colour across there because obviously the grass is going over that blue would have been hard work because some of the greens are very translucent colours too now I'm just this is um, a good case for the glazing technique so what I'm doing I'm using a cream colour and I'm building up the texture on the legs but as I'm building up this texture if I was to leave it like that and I do cover both legs like this with these dots it would look like the bird had got some sort of disease but <laughs> once I start glazing it just pulls everything back to how it should be so you can still see the date the detail but the contrast isn't that high so when when I talk about glazing it's like a stained glass window you can see everything on the other side of a stained glass window it, except that the color 
is changed you know what you're seeing has been tinted by the stained glass window and that's all a glaze is you're just tinting um whatever is already on the canvas but you can still see detail underneath um, just be careful you don't pick up and try to glaze with an opaque color <coughs> excuse me if you're using um, a good quality material then Generally speaking, on the tubes of, of paint, it should say the light fastness of the, um, the paint, the pigments that have been used, um, which can give you a good idea of light fastness as well. And with acrylics how and oils, how opaque um, a paint is as well. So it'll either be opaque or translucent, transparent or semi-opaque. You know, it's going to be one of those three. And if in doubt, just do a little swatch card for yourself and um, put a black line across your swatch card with a Sharpie pen, let that dry and then paint your paint across that black line and you'll see if it's opaque or transparent by how much or how little it covers the black line. Okay, now the bird's chest and tummy area were just completed exactly the same as I did the underneath of the tail and the face. So it was pretty, um, uh, really no point in showing you that process because one, I had the canvas laying on its side and two, it would just, it's just a re repeat and rinse and repeat of everything else on the white areas of the bird. So, okay. So with the grass area, as you can see on the little photo of the finished painting, um, it's just grass is growing in different directions, windswept, and so I'm just going in very randomly with this dark olive colour that I've mixed up as a base coat. And then I use a variety of different greens, um, some cool greens, some warm greens, just to create random um, grass stems and leaves and you'll get a little bit of a close-up here in a minute there you go so if you look out of your window into nature and there's bushes and trees and grass and flowers and hedges and things there's a multitude of greens there's warm greens cool greens you know lime green olive green all mixed in together and they all look perfect because that's nature so you can do exactly the same thing in your painting you can use all different greens in a painting and they'll, they'll all look correct you know your painting will look complete not the same with blues though so just keep that in mind don't tr don't try and to um, mix your blues on a painting unless you're really really sure of the colors you're using but with greens you know everything goes it's lovely so I've just worked up lots of random lines <clears throat> slightly going in different directions but all falling in one whole direction if you know what I mean I'm waving my hands around like you can see what I'm doing um, but yeah, just that randomness of the of the leaves on the, the grass, the grass leaves. And then building up some highlights with beiges and there's some yellow ochre in there as well. And obviously, if the light is catching the bird in various places, then the light is also going to be catching some of these strands of grass as well. So we want to pop those in as well can't believe my voice is holding out this this long <laughs> doing well so where are we now we have about four minutes left so pop in some highlights on there where the lights hit in the ends of those leaves and if you haven't been plain air painting you know drawing and painting out in the open grass is brilliant it's just lovely just go and sit on the local park or in your garden with a sketch pad and some pencils or some paints just sketch a little area of grass and it's really relaxing you can use any colors in there you can put burgundies in there lemon yellows lime yellows and lime greens it's wonderful and just enjoy yourself just paint for the sake of painting because you love to create 
some more highlights going in. Dry brushing can be used to create texture in, in this grass as well if you want, but not too much. And obviously, as I said, dry brushing is where you have very little pigment and water on your brush. You might have a little bit more pigment than water so it doesn't flow as well and it catches on the ridges of the canvas or the paper, whatever you're painting on. You can even paint on mixed media paper so you could do that. But uh, dry brushing does have its place in art but I wouldn't overdo it personally. I like it in some areas but not in a lot of areas in one painting. I do have supply pages on my website actually, uh, kerrynewell.com and there's, several, there's uh, I think about seven separate pages, one page um, for different materials, <coughs> charcoal and graphite, oil paints, watercolours and gouache, acrylics, pastels, studio supplies and things like that. just shows you what I use. Um, in different mediums and but that's all over on my website kerrynewell.com if you'd like to take a look I mean there's obviously more on my supplies list than I've mentioned today in this video and that's the grasses done and that's how we ended up looking so that's the puffin in acrylics finished i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for sticking with me through this video in my croaky voice please like and subscribe if you haven't already and for those of you who have thank you very much it's truly appreciated join me on social media i'm on me we linkedin instagram twitter and facebook and yeah stay creative my friends stay safe and i'll see you all soon Take care. Bye-bye.